Hello and welcome to another mathematics video. Mr. Hennessy loves my introductions. It's fun. A little shout out to Mr. Hennessy. In case you're watching, I won't tell the world your nickname. Um, I think the world already knows that you are a giant anyway, so let's just go with that. Um, factorizing monic quadratic trinomials. Lovely. I mean, if you want to freak a young kid out on the bus, just tell them you're doing that in math and they'll say, what on earth are you talking about? Factorizing, we know how to factorize, we're putting brackets in. Um, monic. Well, monic has, is basically similar to the word mono. It does mean singular, so if you think mono, um, mono brow is one eyebrow. I'm um, doing a mono on a push bike, it's having one wheel on the ground. Um, monotone is talking in one vo vocal tone, like I do all the time. Quadratic, something with an x squared in it. So we saw there's a little bit in the last video, a few x squareds did come into it. Uh, and trinomial means you're looking at an expression with three terms. So tri here, like triceratops, triathlon, triangle, all have to do with three. So let's just grab some examples and I'll talk you through the method as we go. First example, we're doing x squared minus 5x plus 6. And we're going to try and factorize this thing. I'm going to rely on the method of grouping in pairs. Okay, so looking at this right now, there is nothing in common. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to split this middle term here into two numbers that are a little bit more convenient for me that I'm going to like a little bit better. I'm going to show you the long method for doing this today as well, and I'll show you the short method at the end. Um, it's necessary that you learn the long method because when it comes to non-monic quadratic trinomials, um, it's not going to work if you just do the short method. Uh, the reason it's mono here, by the way, is Mono, I said it was to do with one, so monotone, one tone, mono brow, one eyebrow. It's because the number out the front of the x squared is one. Okay, so if this is one, you can use this method. Uh, of course, there's an imaginary one there if you like. Um, but if it's a two there, a three there, a four there, you need to do something else. But the method we're going to do first up, the long method works for everything. So it doesn't matter monic, it doesn't matter non monic, it's all good. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the side of my page and write out three letters P, S, and f. p for product, s for sum, f for factors. To get the value of p, what I do, I take my number out the back, so in this case it's positive 6. The plus gets included, positive 6, multiply by the number out the front, so here it's 1. So 6 by 1, 6 by 1, 6 times 1 is 6. Okay. s, I take from my middle term, so my middle term here is minus 5x, so s I say is minus 5. Okay, so p is 6, s is minus 5. So what I'm looking for now for f, f's two numbers. f is factors, and factors, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply, so whose product is 6, and that add, or whose sum, is minus 5. So two numbers that multiply to get me 6, add together to get me negative 5. This will take a while, so you might want to sit down for a second, think about the factors of 6, um, but hopefully you see pretty soon I get minus 2 and minus 3. It's worth doing a, f a lot of work on this, just getting practice. Um, you want to break down the, the factors of 6 and consider the negatives. There are a bunch of shortcuts, I mean I can do these pretty quickly, um, but it will take a lot of time and practice and you'll see patterns come out. Um, and because mass is a study of patterns, I'm going to let you have a crack at that for yourselves. So checking this, product is 6, minus negative times negative is positive, 2 times 3 is 6. That works. And put them together, minus 5. Okay. So I split my middle term now into minus 2x and minus 3x. So I rewrite my question, x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 6. Okay. Then I look at that. There's four terms, nothing in common. So four terms, nothing in common, the method of grouping in pairs. So this is going to be now x, x minus 2, minus 3, x minus 2. Okay. There's an x minus 2 in common in both of these. So the x minus 2 comes out the front. And what I need to get the line above, I need to get x minus 3 in there as well. So x times x minus 2 and minus 3 times x minus 2. Okay. And 
Again, you can expand that. I would encourage you to try expanding that. Check that you do get the same answer. All right, let's get another example. Example B, B for banana. B for boys. Uh, x squared minus 5x minus 14. Okay, and again, our PSF method. I uh, like the PSF method. Other teachers like other methods. So depending on who you get, you might get a different method taught to you in class. Um, most teachers will go with what they're familiar with. I just like PSF. Um, there are other methods we can use as well. So if PSF isn't really working for you, you can do the other methods. But PSF is, is generally considered a decent method. Uh, factorizing this way is generally considered something pretty common, pretty good. P here. To get P, we took minus 14 multiplied by what's at the front of the x, the coefficient of the x, the coefficient of the x, sorry, x squared. The coefficient of x squared here is 1, so 1 times minus 14 is minus 14. Okay, so 1 times minus 14, minus 14 for product. We get it by getting a product. S is the middle term, so S here is minus 5. Okay, now I'm after two numbers whose product is negative 14 and whose sum is 7. Sorry, whose sum is 5. So sum is negative 5. So multiply to get negative 14, add to get negative 5. I want to consider the factors of 14 because product 14, um, the only real thing you can do for 14 is 1 and 14 or 7 and 2. It turns out here my factors are negative 7 and positive 2. Okay, so negative 7 times 2 is 14, and the sum is minus 5. Okay, if, if p is negative, one of them is negative, not both. Because a positive times a negative is negative, negative times positive is negative. Negative negative is positive, and positive positive is positive. Um, so those rules do come into it, finding p. And because s is negative, the bigger one is going to be negative. So here, check that, multiply them out, it's minus 14. Add them together is minus 5. We're looking pretty good. So this is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 2x minus 14. A temptation here, add like terms, but that just takes you back to what you just got. So there's no point in doing that. Uh, we're trying to factorize. We've now got a self situation where we can group in pairs. So grouping in pairs here, it's x outside of x minus 7. And then I've got 2 outside of x minus 7 again. So this is equal to x plus 2, x minus 7. Okay, and that's my question there done. Um, moving on, let's get another example. So example C. Example C will do x squared plus 6x plus 5. And this does look similar to the first example. You can go back and have a look at the first example if you want. This is a video, um, but it's not actually the same. PSF, down the side of that page, every single time. P is 5 times 1, so P is 5. Yes, the coefficient of the x, which is 6, middle term. F, two numbers that multiply to get 5, add to get 6. So what multiplies to get 5? Well, 5 is prime for starters, so it's only 5 and 1. Um, and in terms of looking at sum, they do add to 6. I think it's obvious enough that those two add to 6. So if we expand this out, if you write this out the long way, x squared plus 5x plus x plus 5. So it doesn't matter which one goes first, 1 and 5, 5 and 1. We get the same answer. Um, don't worry about that. Grouping in pairs. So my pairs here, I'm going to have... Uh, x comes out the first one, so it's x plus 5. Now the last one there, I need to get a bracket in there, so I'm going to put a 1 out the front, x plus 5. Okay, so now, like I said in my grouping in pairs video, these two need to be the same. Bring the x plus 5 out the front, then x plus 1 in brackets, the leftovers in the brackets. Okay, or x need to multiply by x plus 5 to get this, then x plus 5 is multiplied by 1 to get this. So there you have it. One more example. Um, 
I know it's been long as this video, we're already looking at 10 minutes, but let's stick tight. This is a pretty significant deal. D for dinosaur. How I feel sometimes. X squared plus 13x plus 22. So like we do every single time, we're going to do PSF. PSF. So P the product, the product here, 22 and 1, the product is 22. S, the sum, the number that goes from the middle is 13. So after two numbers whose product is 22 and whose sum is 13. Everything's positive, so my two numbers are positive. Okay. Factors are 22. The only ones I can think of are 2 and 11. So let's go 2 and 11. And they do add to 13 as well. Um, you do need to check. If you get these numbers wrong, you, you are not going to get the question, rest of the question right straight up. So always double check those in your head. So going through, this is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 11x plus 22. Okay, I think hopefully you're familiar enough with grouping and pairs at this stage. You can really see how this is going to break down. This is equal to x side of x plus 2. Plus 11, x plus 2. Okay, and the x plus 2s are the same, so x plus 2 comes out the front. And we're going to put then x plus 11 in the brackets afterward. And that's it. I said at the start though, I'll show you a shortcut. And this only works for the monarch case. So only when the number out the front here is 1 will this work. What you will notice, the short method, skipping through, in the monarch case, the f here, the 2 and the 11, 2 and 11. So I can skip these steps in the middle here. And again, coming up, uh, this tool here, again, looking at this, 5 and 1, 5 and 1. Minus 7 and 2, minus 7 and 2. It doesn't matter what order your brackets come in. You could put x minus 7 first, you could put x plus 2 first. It doesn't matter. As long as both your brackets say this, say x plus 2, x minus 7, it doesn't make a difference. Same with the other examples as well. Okay, and then again here, look, like, hoping you're getting the gist that this here, same. Same. So you can skip this step here. So if you get PSF down the side of your page, you can skip straight to the answer, and that's perfectly fine. Um, works for monarch, doesn't work for non monarch. So our next video, we're just going to do this process all over again, um, but just with slightly different numbers. Uh, and we're going to do all these steps in here. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this makes sense and is, is helpful to you. Uh, best of luck trying some for yourselves.